Economy Map shows environmental impacts from three perspectives, direct, intermediate, and final consumption. To understand these perspectives and their value, let's look at a simplified version of the supply chain that delivers meat to restaurants. And let's look at how the sectors in this supply chain affect land use change. Land use change refers to the reduction or loss of biological or economic productivity from croplands, pasture, open range, or woodlands. Four sectors form the core of this supply chain. Feed grains, the grain that is grown to feed cattle. Meat animals, the raising of cattle for slaughter. Meat packing, the slaughter and processing of cattle into meat. And eating and drinking places, the restaurants that deliver the meat to consumers in the form of food. So the question is, which sectors in this supply chain cause the most damage? Using a direct impacts perspective, we could look at the direct contribution of each of these sectors to land use change. And we see that the growing of feed grains and the raising of meat animals together contribute 41% of all land use change impacts in the entire U.S. economy. That is pretty amazing that just two sectors through their own activities generate almost half of all the land use change impacts in the United States. So if we could influence the activities of these two sectors, we would influence 41% of the total land use change environmental impacts in the United States. But it's not that simple, because these sectors are growing grain and raising animals in response to economic demand. So we should really try to understand also where the economic demand is coming from that motivates these sectors to generate land use change impacts. Looking first at which sectors are creating demand for feed grains, we see that the meat animals sector purchases about a third of the output of the feed grain sector, with the rest of the outputs of feed grains purchased by other sectors. So we can consider the meat animal sector responsible for creating some of the economic demand that results in the land use change impacts of the feed grain sector. And the meat animal sector also generates demand for the services of other sectors that have land use change impacts, which increases the total amount of impacts for which we might hold the meat animal sector responsible and if we look downstream from the meat animal sector, we can see that the meat packing sector is responsible for about three quarters of the demand for the outputs of the meat animal sector, with other industrial sectors creating the demand for the rest of the outputs of the meat animal sector. The meat packing sector then sells about half of its output to other industrial sectors, and the remainder is sold directly to consumers of the government. And the eating places sector also generates upstream demand for other goods and services with land use change impacts. So from a final consumption perspective, if we only focus on those goods and services in this supply chain that are sold directly to consumers and government purchasers, we can see that consumer and government demand for meat packing is responsible for 19% of all land use change impacts across the entire economy, and another 14% of all the land use change impacts in the U.S. economy are generated in response to consumers and government demand for the services of eating places. So if we come back to the question, which sectors in this supply chain cause the most damage, the answer is not so simple. From a direct impacts perspective, what an economist might call a production or supply-oriented perspective, feed grains and meat animals were the most significant because they directly generated 41% of all land use change impacts in the economy. But from a final consumption perspective, or what an economist might call a demand-oriented perspective, the most significant sectors are meatpacking plants and restaurants because 33% of all land use change impacts in the U.S. economy are generated in response to final economic demand from consumers and government for the services of these two sectors. And this supply chain also highlights a third perspective. We can look at the supply chain from an intermediate perspective, which looks at the total direct and upstream impacts of each sector. If we look at the meat animals and meatpacking sectors, the total direct and indirect upstream impacts of the meat animal sector represent 45% of all the land use change impacts in the entire economy. In other words, 45% of all the land use change impacts in the entire economy pass through the meat animal sector, and 36% of all the land use change impacts in the entire U.S. economy pass through the meatpacking sector on their way to final consumers or other industry sectors. This is a more complicated perspective, not least because it involves double counting. In this case, for instance, almost all of the intermediate impacts of the meatpacking sector 
are also counted as part of the 45% number for meat animals. But this is a useful perspective because it helps to identify sectors that could be significant points of leverage through a combination of their own impacts and the impacts associated with their upstream economic demand for services. These three perspectives help us to see that the answer to the original question, which sectors in this supply chain cause the most damage, varies depending upon our own perspective. As a voter or policymaker, I may be most interested in those sectors that have high direct impacts, because these sectors are good candidates for direct regulation by government to encourage technology improvement or substitution. As a business person, it would be important to recognize sectors with high intermediate impacts, since these sectors offer significant opportunities for supply chain engagement. As a consumer or institutional purchaser, I may be most interested in sectors with high final consumption impacts, since these are sectors where I could make a difference through preferable purchasing or eco-labeling. So maybe a better question is, given the impact profile of a specific sector, what approaches will be most likely to reduce its environmental impacts? In the economy map network and bar graph display modes, all three perspectives are displayed for each sector at the same time. Each sector is shown as three side-by-side -side rectangles, representing, from left to right, direct, intermediate, and final consumption impacts. In the network mode, all of the sectors in the economy are connected together in an economy-wide version of the simplified meat supply chain. In the bar graph mode, the individual perspectives are highlighted and the sectors are arranged into top 20 rankings by impact category and perspective. In both cases, the shape of a sector communicates its environmental profile from all three perspectives. So Economy Map refocuses the question that I started with. Rather than asking which sectors cause the most significant impacts, we can ask what types of impacts, direct, intermediate, or final, does each sector generate and therefore what approaches can best address them.